Caprio. And we are coming at you live from James H. Vernon High School uh, Middle School Gym with a specialty broadcast requested by head coach Soper for your very own first this year undefeated team. Your seventh grade basketball, the only undefeated team for the Bay this year. Uh, James, you're a seventh grader. You know these yes, cats yes. out here. What do you think? Um, they've been doing really good this season. Um, I'm really excited to see what happens happens this game. Um, again, like their um, team captain Griffin, he's been doing really good this season, um, and I'm really excited to see what happens here. Well, James, how about you introduce our starting lineup here for the Bay? Okay, so our starting lineup is James Sapienza, number four, Kieran Dunn, number 45, Griffin Lawner, number 23. Dean Sakovic, number five, and Bryce Murphy, number one. So, number one, uh, Bryce Murphy. Yeah. Coach Soap, he noted that he is a very good shooter, smart player, more of that one, two guard set, and uh, he can sh he can shoot the lights out of this gym. So I'm excited to I'm excited to uh, see him play. Yes, it's gonna be very exciting. Number 45. Kieran Dunn for the tip. And Sap gets the ball. Dunn slaps it out to the very athletic Sapienza. He's going to be the fourth in the Sapienza family. Great neck. Swinging it around. Nice defense by the Bay as they're able to force a turnover early. Sapienza to take up the ball. He's going to be running the point tonight for the Bay. Good look to the corner, and he drives oh, baseline, wow. and he's able to convert as he drives baseline and hits it high off the glass. Tough man up defense by the Bay, able to force a turnover. James, what do you think of the strategy of Coach Soap, you know, doing that man-to-man -man defense? Um, I think they just want to like lock it because they have really solid defense. They just want to um, make sure that they don't get past, um, that the other team doesn't get past them, and they just um, sc uh, score. That's uh, number 23, Griffin Liner, on the second chance effort, causing into points. Oh! Wow. I don't know about that one, James. That looked like all ball to me up here yeah. in the booth. That did look all ball. Sapienza got vertical and just slapped that right out of his hands. I don't really agree with that call, but yeah, there's plenty of game left to play. Mm -hmm. And misses off the left side of the rim and out. And great neck, it's a big offer from the line. Big offer too, as Sapiens is gonna slow it down over on the wing. Send it over to his big man, Dunn, who uh, works high in that high post, really working around the horn, and as he cuts to the rim, and is able to convert. I mean, Dunn has really caused a presence there in that high post as he works down to the low post. He's really, he's really turning the tide here for the Bay, making it the Bay game, gonna be won and lost in the post. Sapienza, some scrappy defense, forces a deep three and grabs nothing but net as wow. Great Neck gets himself up on the board. This is really looking good for uh, Oyster Bay right here. Very nice, working it back to Dunn. And Dunn gets whacked, doesn't get a call. As they're gonna reset. Really working around. Nice shot from Murphy. Grabs absolute nothing but net from the corner. 
Murphy considered to be an undersized player, but the fight in his heart beats any type of height there is as he works on his shoot, shooting form and his game, and that's going to make up for his size. Looking to spread the court. Coach Soap calling for opposite. Murphy gets open in the corner and cannot convert. Deep three. Off the dribble. High arcing shot. Grabs nothing but net. And Great Neck gets another three pointer. Works it to the middle to Dunn. Yeah. And Great Neck's able to break away to a wide open lane. Mm. Hard pass from Sapienza just goes right through the hands of Sokovic. Out of bounds. Well advised timeout from Soap. Maybe calm the guys down a little bit as. They get back to a tie game, 8-8 here with 3.42 to go in your first quarter. What do you think of the defensive performance, James, from your bay tonight? Uh, I think it's really strong tonight. Um, like all games, it's it's just really good. And this is why they're really they're undefeated because they, um, like they have really strong defense. Double screen up top. Against Murphy, he's able to fight through, stick to his man. Very nice, moving their feet. And Dean gets himself a block. And then Bay wow. is able to convert on the fast break. That's going to be Peter who's able to convert on the layup. Sapienza gets beat offside. He's going to get called in for a reach and foul. That's two on Sapienza here in the first quarter. You don't want to see your guard, probably an influential player here, get in foul trouble. Another block for the Bay. They're really using their height. Oh, oh. and the deep pass just goes long. Okay. It's off the outstretched arms of Peter. Nice defense by Sapienza. And that's Peter Nicolopoulos to take the ball out for the Bay. Got subbed in. Created havoc early. Making a real difference out there on the court. Really strong performance so far. Good six man to have on your bench. Oh, Ooh. and just gets once again off the tip, off the fingertips of Dean. The passes are just coming a little too hot. And I think as the game starts to build up, they're going to build some chemistry. <laughs> Dean gets beat baseline. Mm. Nice pump fake by Great Neck. And Soap cannot be happy with that one. Works it down low, back up to the low post. Dean's looking to corral it, and he just can't. Great neck on the fast break. Nice steal as Soap switches over on the inbound for a 3-2 zone. And a very late whistle. He finally gets the foul that was well-deserved as he got hacked hard going to the rim. Sappy ends of the line for two. Yeah. 
Nice high arc nice in the shot. shot. Nice shot. It's great form by Sapienza there. You, you can really see he takes pride in the little things when it comes to basketball. Practice at the line. Yeah, definitely one of the strongest players they have here. You know, Coach Scope talked to us before the game. He said Sapienza has great skills as he puts in another one. But that great skills comes with some great work ethic, great practice. And it, uh, it shows there from the line as the little things matter to Sapienza. Unlike many other seventh grade basketball players. Yes. Nice switch on the pick, forcing an Ooh. air ball. Weak shot, ill advised. Great defense from the Bayman. As the ball gets stolen away, timeout is not awarded to Soper. It's going to go off the hands. Off of uh, Great Neck there. It's going to be Bayman Ball on the inbound. Oh, Griffin Lawner with a nice shot there. Lawner flashes to the high post. And Sappy Enzis able to poke the ball away with 55 seconds left in the first quarter. Timeout's going to go to Great Next Way. With 55 seconds left here in the first, Bay is up four. James, I've noticed that uh, Soap, Coach Soap, has been utilizing his big man a lot. You know, you gotta you gotta say that you know, Soap really you know he did his homework. He understands that we are gonna be taller than them, more physical than them, and that's mm -hmm. that's really been the story of his year as he's used his height, athleticism of his team to his advantage, and uh, they're looking to cap off their year here with another W as they've been undefeated all year. Yes. Yes. Nice help in the middle. As he takes it all the way with wow. a nice crossover. That's Luna. Wow. Takes it coast to coast off the steel. Crosses over on the fast break. Uses his right hand to go up high off the glass. Very athletic from Griffin. Soap told us before the game about Griffin that he's been our leader and uh, I want to quote leader and heart and soul of this team as you saw there he, he went from a steel coast to coast but I think Soap knows on a bigger level of what he does what he brings to the locker room for this team and uh, his work ethic he brings to practice he has a big heart for basketball he practices almost every day uh, one of my greatest friends so Coach told us before the game that he's got 10 points. He averages about 10 points a game with two seconds left at the buzzer. Oh, oh wow, out. wow. A nice that was shot. Close. That was close. Nice shot by him. Three-quarter court shot. This is hard off the backboard and rims out. You would have loved to see that fall as that would have been the dagger to end this first quarter. But the Bay up by six, 16-10. Going into the second quarter, what do you think? What do you think Great Neck's got drawn up to stop our big men in the middle? I mean, they might be using most of their tall players to try and stop us, but again, we are undefeated this entire season, and um, I'm just really looking forward to what happens in the second half. So your starting lineup for your second 
quarter is. So we have Jack Jabosi, number 10, Andrew Obando, number 14, Christopher Hall, number 11, James Leary, number 34, and Nicholas Von Bargen, number 20. Von Bargen, Von Bargen is going to yes. be a threat this quarter. Yeah. As he's he's going to be your guy. He's going to be your opposing guy in the middle. He's going to be your shack of this quarter. Going to work on the rebounds. So Chris Hall was the uh, hero of the Wheatley game. And he's a great athlete. So I'm really excited to see what he does this quarter. It's going to be... Jabosi to run point for the Bayman. Gonna, gonna facilitate out there for us as he does in the club. Jack Jabosi, member of our club, wanna shout him out. He's a seventh grader and I'm a 11th grader and you got a 12th grader behind the, cor behind the camera for us tonight. So you really gotta say it's a seven through 12 club as wow. as they go. Wow. Very nice tandem on the fast break. Really looking like a well-oiled machine out here tonight. Those guys look like it's the Bay versus the world and they're really embodying that as number 14, Andrew, takes it in for the layup. Uh, Andrew Obando with the um, um, good try for the shot. Obando. Abondo has been an all-around solid player for the Bay. He's been more of that utility player, can work inside, can work outside, and the defensive side of the ball is where he gets his money. As they look like they're in that man, that hard-nosed man-up defense. Jabosi, nice defense, forced it to pass the middle, and it looked like it was a complete heave from the foul line. One thing I've, one trend I've noticed from Oyster Bay to Great Neck is that Oyster Bay has been really designing plays, getting high percentage shots as they're swinging from the opposite side of the court to wide open three, and gets a second chance for effort. Wow. And that's all set up by the coaching of Coach Soper, as that everything from Great Neck has really just been heaves, chucks, and uh, no real design plays, and I think that's a testament to Coach Soper's coaching abilities to really mold these young minds as he does in two different sports. He's a coach for seventh and eighth grade football, and he's now coaching an undefeated seventh grade basketball team. You know, Soap is really noted around the school for molder of men, you know, really likes to mold the mind when it comes to sports, and he's doing it here very well at the middle school level as they're looking like they're a crisp team. And I would say they're, you know, Jack, I would say uh, if it, right now I think they could play, you know, a, a junior varsity, how well they're running right now. Yeah, I mean, they're doing really good um, this game. They did, they've been good all the season. Again, um, Soper is really, you know, helping these kids out, you know, making them the best basketball player they really can be. You know, when it comes to Oyster Bay, there's many three sport athletes and that's really our embodiment when it comes to our school is that everybody's got to be spread real thin and, and, and play some Ironman sports but you never hear of three sport coaches I mean Coach Soap working from football to basketball right into lacrosse no break for Soap I mean on top of that he teaches so Coach Soap really embodies what it means to be a Bayman. And I think he puts that on to the kids and, and he really puts it on display each night he goes out there, no matter what sport. And it's shown and displayed by his players. As that's going to be James Leary called in for the reach in. Very nice hands from the Bay as Jabosi's going to look to push oh. it down the court and just goes out the outstretched hands of a Bondu. Oh, excuse me, a Bondo. 
you know, something that's really interesting is that they switch to a 3-2 zone when it comes to the inbound, and they've gotten a steal off of it almost every time. As they go on a fast break, very nice two-on-one situation. Yeah. And Von Bargain gets a second chance point. But, you know, that's high IQ basketball, something you don't see at the seventh grade level as they as they work a two-on-one situation. And, and although the layup missed, but it set him up for... Uh, second chance points by Von Bargain. Yeah, every every chance they have, they just take that chance and get it in the hoop. Man. On the other end, oh, excuse me, Von Bargain with a nice, wow, underhand reverse layup. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, these seventh graders, I would put them up against any really Nassau County um, junior varsity team as a hard foul at the rim from Leary. You know, James, I'm kind of with that strategy from Leary. You know, up to, up by tw um, excuse me, up by 14. They got 24 points. I say no easy buckets at the rim. Yeah, yeah. Want to secure the win? Secure it. You know, so preaches sweep the leg, go for the win anytime you get, and I don't care how many points you're up. Mm -hmm. I say no easy buckets. Yeah. Great neck, able to convert. As our very own cameraman checks into the game, Josh Goldschmidt, another seventh grader, member of the club, little Goldie, you know, works hard on the court as he gets a rebound, impactful as soon as his feet hit the hardwood. Pass to the low post by Von Bargen, nice drop set, can't convert at the rim. Although that layup missed, that drop step was at a level that I've never seen from a seventh grader as he's really, you know, kind of beyond his years. And Chris Hall reads that pass. Wow, up. wow. Chris Hall is able to read that pass with ease, take it the other way, and they're up 26-11 here late in the second quarter. Another heave from Great Neck, can't convert. They're able to get the offensive rebound, but both our members from the club out there are um, able to fight to get a jump ball. And uh, let's see if uh, Soap switch into that patent 3-2 zone when it comes to the inbound and get himself another steal from the inbound. Fast to the corner, corner three, misses Wong off the back side of the rim. Jabosi gets his pocket picked from the back side. Didn't see the great neck player coming from anywhere. So preaching that you can't have that, you know, senseless turnover. Pumps and stabs a couple times and a hook shot. Maybe trying to channel his little bit of his Kareem in him but can't get it to convert. Von Bargain flash in middle, and Goldschmidt from deep misses short off the front side of the rim. Great Neck's not able to corral it. And in this timeout, we're gonna switch you over to our very own girls basketball coach. Coach Richard Geiger has entered James H. Vernon Middle School gym. Coach, I know you've coached girls basketball, but what do you see out of these young guys out here today? Listen, they are uh, hustling, they are working hard. Coach Soper has them ready to go against that zone. They're going to the porch, finding the, the big in the middle, and they're really just you know using their size to expose Great Neck's uh, lack of size, and they're doing a really, really good job. Um, I heard you say a couple times the pedals to the metal and they are not holding back. They really want this undefeated season and they've done a tremendous job to this point. Well that's going to be Coach Geiger. Please tune in to his game tonight on Bayman TV 7 o'clock as we're going to get back to the action inside the James H. Vernon uh, gym. Thank you coach. Immediately off the timeout 
Von Bargen comes down with an offensive rebound looking to make an impact. And his pass to the cross court gets stolen. And there it is again. Oh, what a very nice N1 from Great Neck. Once again, I want to rebuttal that. Please tune in to your Varsity Girls basketball game here at 7 o'clock inside the Boathouse for the Geigers game. Please tune in. Misses high off the back rim. Another person that has made an entrance inside the James H. Vernon High Middle School gym is your very own trainer, Miss Eleni. She has entered as she's 7 through 12 trainer, looks after boys and girls sports all the time. Shout out Eleni. As the Baymen are able to bounce back from a little discrepancy from the refs. Oh, a shot from deep. Wow. Maybe took a few steps over half court there, James, and let it fly. A little heat check, I guess. Mm -hmm, yep. Von Bargen is going to check out of the game as he's made an impact for when he was in. And number 13... Alex Streich has come in. Has come in. He um, is a role player and has a good shooting touch. Other words from Soper. And I gotta think that their strategy is gonna get in the hands of the shooter that just took a step over half court and just let it fly. And I think Great Neck thought that was a travel, and I think so did everybody else in the gym, but they got, they called Josh Goldschmidt on the foul. Can't agree mm -hmm. with that one. Yeah. Passes it down low, and Streich says no way as he forces a bad shot hit off the side of the backboard. And Soap's going to call him to slow down. Probably hold for the last shot, but drive gets diminished as Streich is going to call be called for the three-second violation. I want to note that the hype is real around this seventh grade basketball team as really, I mean, they're really packing it in here in the gym. You know, your very own superintendent, Dr. Yanni, came down for this. Um... Darren Jabosi, your board member, came down for this. I mean, there's countless high school teachers in the stands. I mean, the hype is real. Soap has really hyped up their boys, his boys, but well-deserved hype it is. Yeah, a lot more um, students of 7th grade, too, have came here today to um, cheer on the, the undefeated Oyster Bay. With six seconds left, Coach Soap is probably going to draw something up for his shooters to get open around the around the wing maybe the corner you know you gotta think that it's gonna go to Mick Evo who Soap said he has a nice touch in the wing and there it is to the wing can't get it shot from deep oh it can't convert at the buzzer And that's going to do it for the first half as it's 28-16. Wow. Your Bayman inside here. Um, James, what do you think from the Bay in the first half? I think it was really strong effort. Um, they really like tried their best, got every opportunity they can. And I just can't wait to see all the, this energy carry over to the second half. We'll get back out to you in the second half.
And that's going to do it for the halftime as the Baymen are going to check back into the game. You know, probably keep throwing gasoline on the fire here. And uh, they're going to get going with Sapienza to bring up the ball. Nice ball movement from the Bayman. Sapienza with the ball. Nice ball movement from the Bay. Just can't convert at the rim. Deep three from Great Neck. Just one of those other, another heaves. And Dunn is going to be called for the foul. It's going to be N1 at the rim. One shot from the line. Misses short off the front side of the rim and Dunn can come down with that rebound. Nice crossover. Murphy comes down with that rebound. Swings it opposite way to Murphy. Murphy is looking for a shot, can't find it, gets done in the low post. Great ball movement here in, in the bay. Forced fadeaway shot maybe, but they're really sticking to their game plan and a hook shot from Murphy cannot convert. Pass goes a little bit long as Coach Soper is gonna call a timeout here. Maybe settle their guy, his guys down for the second half. <laughs> Sapienza to bring up the ball. Dunn's just going to use his strength and back him down, and he gets called for a double dribble. That's going to be frustrating as you think they just drew that up in the timeout, but I don't think Soper had the double dribble in mind. And the pass goes nowhere. and it goes off the outstretched arms of Dunn in the high post. Up until now, Sapiens has been very clean with his passes, very crisp, something that a lot of seventh graders are not, and a long pass to wow. Murphy oh. cannot get it to go his way. But that was a nice pass by number mm -hmm. 23. A Griffin Lawner. And James, what do you think about Lor Lawner's play tonight? I mean, again, he's like the team leader, and he, it's really well deserved because every game he has uh, like almost 10 points. Um, there he is now as yeah, we're talking about yeah. him. I'm going to have to call his number as he hits it high off the glass for a high percentage layup. So he's really just an amazing player. Um, just, I don't even like it's. He it makes me speechless. It's, it's really good. And that's really a testament to it his work, work ethic, which Coach Soapy said he's had all year, worked hard, 
stays in the gym extra hours and as he comes down with the rebounds looks like he's going to take it coast to coast and he gets whacked Ooh. going to the rim and no foul but Dunn's able to come down with the offensive rebound Uh, Dean Sakovic um, uh, um, got knocked to the ground. Now taking the um, sh uh, foul. Sakovic's shot goes a little bit long. Dunn swings the ball around. Back to Dunn in the low post. And he goes up hard. Cannot get a convert. But Lorna comes down with a rebound. And again, utilizing that box. Being a smart basketball player, having high IQ out there on the floor, really bringing this team together as he's done all year. Comes down with another rebound. He's going to bring it up the court. And it grabs a high shot from the elbow, grabs nothing but net. Sapiens has really looked like a field general out there today. He's really been managing the game. And Lorna's shot does not fall for him. Murphy with the rebound. There you go. Probably the smallest guy out there on the court gets second chance points. That scrappy play is probably what's got the Bayman, you know, big W's all year long and is probably working to get a W here tonight. One of another of those heave shots chucked up shots from uh, Great Neck. And, Lor and uh, Lauren is able to fight through the defense and the contact to convert at the rim. As the defense chance from the crowd starts to creep in here, Sapienza gets a hand on that one as it goes out of bounds. And you can really feel the energy in here. It's like it's really um, strong from the players and the crowd. Like I said, the hype is real behind this seventh grade team. They've undefeated. They deserved every win they got, and they're looking for another one here. Zapienz is going to slow it down here. And he's number 22. Declan is going to be called for a travel. Um, Declan Windhausen has ca came, came in today. Um, he, he's a role player and he's a great rebounder. Windhauser, maybe not the tallest on the team, but once again poses another one of those threats of a scrappy player. Somebody down there in the low post, maybe more of that power forward look. And uh, grabs a lot of rebounds for the Bay. Shot goes long off the back rim. Can't convert on the first. And he's gonna miss on the second. As that's gonna be Escuerto coming down with that rebound. Escuero, kind of new to the game of basketball, still learning, but he's a big, strong rebounder, as Soap says, as he comes down with another one. Back-to-back -back rebounds for him. Nice crossover by Sapienza, and a Eurostep gets hacked going to the rim. Doesn't get a call. Offensive rebound for the Bay.
As subs come in now, we have James Angela Dacus. James Angela Dacus is a good shooter from the outside. And a fadeaway shot cannot convert for Great Neck. Shot cannot fall. Wow. Uh, Dean Sikovic, uh made the shot. Um, so Sikovic has posed more of that athletic threat for the Bay tonight. He's definitely one of the intelligent players who can shoot it when, it, when he's open, and uh, we just witnessed that. So Sikovic is more of the that speed guy that's going to get you out on a run, maybe mm -hmm. that fast break, and is going to break the game open for you. Yep. Pass to the middle, gets a hard foul. And Great Neck's going to the line again. And misses hard off the backboard. Can't convert on the first. And it's going to go over at the line. Deep shot. Ooh. Misses off the left side of the rim. Tries for the buzzer. Tries to get fouled. Doesn't get it. And at the end of the third quarter, it's going to be 38-22 for the Bay. So looking and, really good for the Baymen right now. And they're really amped up. They're amped up in the gym for the fourth quarter, and we're going to be back for the start of that. And James, how about you introduce us to our starting lineup for the fourth quarter? As we know, everybody gets equal playing time here in the middle school level. Yes. Okay, so number 20, Nick Von Bargen. Number 14, Andrew Obando. Number 34, James Leary. Number 11, Chris Hall. And number 10, Jack Jabosi. And Jabosi to Von Bargain, and Von Bargain gets fouled hard at the rim. There haven't been many foul calls. I have a feeling that these refs want to get home for an early dinner tonight. Yeah. <laughs> As they look to push the ball up the court, doesn't go the Bay's way. And even being 38-22 in the last game of the season. Coach Soper never stops coaching these kids because he knows that their development never stops. And he still runs the same plays that the varsity runs. And uh, he's always looking to develop and better these players for their future to come when it comes to Oyster Bay basketball. Chris Hall with some competitive defense on the corner down to the baseline and forces a timeout. Very nice by Hall, forcing a timeout out of the great next pocket.
And Soap has switched over to his 2-3 th defense here. Maybe cut down on the fouls as that strategy doesn't work. As he senses that they're getting a little bit into foul trouble. And uh, he doesn't really want that, so he's going to switch out of the man-to-man -man defense and into the 2-3 zone. And for Great Neck has had a tough go of it here at the line. Left a lot of points on the floor. And is going to go another 0 for 2 at the line. Paul, deep pass to Jabosi. Jabosi with a fadeaway. Cannot convert at the rim. That's a stinger as he had put on a very nice move there at the low block. Deep shot, floater of sense, grabs nothing but net. Uh-oh, guys, M Miss Murcott has entered the building. The legend herself, Oyster Bay basketball legend, has come to support the seventh grade boys. And Hall's layup cannot go, but Van Bargen comes down with it for second chance points. Miss Murcott, go check into her game and Coach Geiger's game at 7 p.m. tonight. Hall is able to steal the ball and gets fouled Ooh. hard going to the rim. Chris Hall noted for his performance in the Wheatley game. The hero in the Wheatley game, as Coach Soper said. Um, they're going to send him to the line now. Hall's going to go an over at the line. Can't convert. Want to note, though, that Chris Hall is a true bayman of the sense as he's a fourth generational uh, kid here in the Bay. And his aunt was a math teacher for many of years at the Oyster Bay High School. Deep shot again. Maybe. Just you know, chucking it up there as they can't really penetrate this Bayman defense. Back to Chris Hall. I mean, he really knows and understands because it's been taught to him at the kitchen table what it's like to be a Bayman, what it means to win for your town, especially the small school of Oyster Bay. As he really has probably taken that into pride, as he you know is the hero from the Wheatley game and uh, is really been an influential part of the winning of the Bayman uh, this season. As he picks his pocket right there and it's gonna it's gonna hit off the leg of the Great Neck player. There was no there was a little dispute on that but it's gonna stay Bayman way. Excuse me, it's gonna go Bayman way. Shot from the corner. Wow. Uh, Kieran Dunn. Uh, James Leary. Um, again, he's a really solid player. Tough, and he's a, an all-around amazing player. He's really helped out this Oyster Bay team a lot. Cheers from the crowd as uh, Jet Mac Mac McAvoy. Um, 
just is a, a really like um, good touch for the wing. He could rebound and he could jump. As, as you see there from the corner, yep. shot goes a little bit short and it's gonna bounce great next way. Jabosi with some nice man up defense there. Uh, Jake Catino, um, very energetic right off the bench. Um, he can sh shoot. He's been really like been really good on the shooting this year, as he's been working on, at it. Um, and we can really see that improvement from game to game. That's great. Next, going to control the ball here after that wild shot from inside the paint. As they're gonna get Quintano on a, on a reach in. And Van Bargen is gonna take a well-deserved rest as he worked hard all night inside the paint. Yeah, Von Bargen's been really doing a really good job this year. With 2.05 left. And. It looks like McAvoy's going to force a turnover there. Jabosi gets pushed hard and no foul with Bay's way. Twenty point lead for the Bay. Jabosi's just gonna slow it down. Deep shot. Oh. As you can see there, Jay Catino. Um, been, he's again he's, he's been working on the shooting. He's been, he's been doing really good. And we can now see this improvement with the three point shot he just made. High off the glass, well arcing shot and very nice from Quintino. Does he go back to it? Mm. Oh, and Coach so calls a timeout right before the sub in. Mr. Matt, Matt O'Brien is going to get some playing time for the team manager. You know, team manager is not nothing to frown upon. You still get to work on your skills come practice, and you might even get some playing time in the game. So O'Brien, he's a, you know, overall... He puts in a lot of work in practice time. He betters, he betters his team for it, and now he's getting rewarded with some game minutes. Little Goldie to inbound the ball. Nice pass to the low block as he gets an offensive rebound. O'Brien with the offensive rebound. They're swinging over to Goldschmidt. Ooh. And he can't convert. Matt O'Brien's been hurt all year uh, with his ankle, and now he's coming back on the last game of the season, and he's and he's gonna make um, a difference. He's gonna help the Bayman to a victory here late mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter with seconds to go, up by 20. I gotta say, you know, I don't want to call it till the game's over, but it's really almost out of reach for Great Neck with 33 seconds left. Mm -hmm. And it's been a complete rout here from the Bay. Putting up 20 on Great Neck. The Rebels had no match, no answer for the high paced offense and well performed defense. Had no answer for them all night, and it's really showed. And Great Neck's going to be sent to the line again. <coughs> See if they can convert here. And they cannot. 
they've had a tough go of it when it comes to the line. Coach Soap coaching all the way down to the final 10 seconds here. You know, he never lets up, and that's, that's a testament to where he's been for an undefeated team. And a deep three. Ooh. Wow. Is able to fall. A half-court shot. Oh! And just rims out wow. there. As that's going to do it here in the fourth quarter, and there's going to be a fifth quarter where I believe the best play, all rules, real school basketball, and we'll get back to you for that. At the start of the fifth quarter, it's going to be great neck. Rebel ball coming in. Good steal by James Leary. Leary, Leary read that pass the whole way and is able to convert it the other side of the court. Deep three from the Rebels. And as Nick Furbach won bargain to, Gr to Griffin Lawner. And another N1 opportunity for Great Neck, and Coach Soap has got to be killing himself on how many fouls there have been tonight. And they're going to send him on the line again. See what he can do this time. And misses hard off the back rim. They pass it up to Jabosi. Jabosi is going to take it all the way. Wow. And very nice as he's able to shield the defender with his body as he goes up for the layup. Very nice guard work from Jabosi driving to the lane. As there's going to be a complete shift as your new lineup for the Bay is going to check into the game. Um, so we have uh, Bryce Murphy, number one. Christopher Hall, number 11. James Angelodakis, number 12. Uh, Alex Streich, number 13, and Lucas Esquerdo, number 15. They've been doing really good this season, um, and today they are playing without their one of the two big parts, David Grant and Trevor Fairbend, because they went on um, vacation. And even without them, they still are doing an amazing job stealing the ball. Um, amazing job shooting, amazing defense. It's just been a really good run this entire season. As Chris Hall is able to force a turnover in the backcourt. Now in the fifth quarter, you can utilize a press. Fifth quarter, all rules go. You know, it's, it's, it's real basketball at this point. 
And a deep three cannot fall as Hall's gonna come down with that rebound. As the foul calls have really just been going one way here tonight. Has not really phased the Bayman as they've still been able to put up 51. But I would have liked to see you know, more calls go both ways here. That is going to be Murphy to bring up the ball. And a nice crossover. Drives to the middle, dishes to the wing, and three ball comes up just a little bit short. And the Rebels are able to make a three ball fall. As the press goes to work for Great Neck. All swings up to Murphy. Shot from the corner, Ooh. cannot convert. Esquerdo taps it out, nobody there. As I think Great Neck's foot was on the line, but they're gonna call jump ball before that. As some physical basketball here in the fifth quarter. Not a lot of fouls called, as you see a lot of pushing and shoving. And the inbound goes nowhere. Oyster Bay really wants to secure this win, getting a little furious. And a new line is gonna sub in for the Bayman. As we have number 33, Anthony Scheidet. Number five, Dean Sikovic. Number 30, Jet McAvoy. Number 24, Peter Nicolopoulos. And number 22, Declan Winhausen. Sikovic to break the press, he does so. And that's going to be Nika, Nika Popeless. <laughs> Nikolopoulos, excuse me, to dribble out of that and dish it down low to number 33. Anthony Scheidet. Scheidet really posing a big man threat as he gets a stuff going to the rim. And it's going to stay great neck way. He's really one of their toughest players, Anthony Scheidet. He's a great rebounder. Shot from the corner, mid-range, is able to convert. Sakovic able to break the press nicely once again. Shaidet with the rebound, misses off the back of the backboard. Ooh. And another line as Coach Soper has got himself a deep bench here. Checks into the game. Mid-range misses long. Fadeaway misses short. Great Neck has had not much success tonight. They Gold really Goldschmidt fadeaway cannot get it to fall. And Coach Soper is not happy with the turn of events that's going on right now. As Great Neck... Gets it within 13 with 2.26 left to go. Soper's really using all his lineup here that he, that he has. Trying to use everybody so that they can secure this win here. As it is getting closer and closer. With all these fouls tonight, the Bayman finally entering a one and one situation.
Great Neck South is on an 11 to two run, trying to run away with this game as we have not had much success offensively in the fifth quarter. Dunn kicks it down low to the assist as that's gonna be Leary for a nice high percentage low block shot. That was great off ball movement from the Bayman. Deep three, high arcing shot and Dunn's gonna come down with that rebound. Goldschmidt looking for somebody to do with it. Try to force the pass into the middle of the field. Long pass just cannot hit. As Great Neck South really trying to stretch the court here. And they're pressing very nice from Obando, able to break the press, but it gets stolen from him from the other end. And a layup goes out of the hands and does not even hit the backboard. Mid-range, oh wow! And grabs a deep mid-range and extends their lead by two. That was Obando from deep. Obando's really an all-around solid player and, and Soper says that he can shoot, he can shoot the ball and he is a really solid player and we could see that. And he's gonna miss short. as they sub in again. Again, re really utilizing his players right now. About a minute left here for your undefeated seventh grade basketball team. Will they stay undefeated throughout five quarters? They did in the, in the regular four. See what they can do here in the fifth. Can they keep number one to their name? As the Bayman get fouled, and they're going to be sent to the line for a one and one. Matt O'Brien is going to be at the line. Again, just came back from his injury, so I'm, um, we're going to see what happens here. Yeah. Makes oh, the shot. And utilizes the glass. Wow. Coming back from his injury, he's doing really good so far. Let's see if he can go two for two here. Oh. And cannot convert on the second one. Fighting for the rebound. Scrappy play from Esquerdo. Wow. Esquerdo's jumping all over the floor looking to get the rebound. Cannot fall his way with 52 seconds left. And it's going to be 58 41 here for the Bayman. Little discrepancy with the amount of fouls for the Bayman. Soper is not happy with the amount of fouls that have been committed here. There's 45 seconds left in this season. A daunting 45 seconds. I 
I don't want to jinx it, but um, I think Oyster Bay has this in the bag. I don't know if he pump faked a foul shot or what, but Oyster Bay is called for a violation as the first ever pump fake I've ever seen on a foul shot. One of the craziest things I've seen comes to basketball. And off the front rim and in, he makes use of his second shot. He's great next to the press here. Goldsmith's looking to break the press. Spin move, ball gets stolen from him and he's able to steal it back. Scrappy play from Goldschmidt and he finally gets called on the foul. As it gets figured out here with the with the book, it's going to be one and one, and that's going to be Declan Windhauser at the line. As the gym goes quiet, Windhauser really locks in and misses off the backboard. And a cherry pick on the other end. Cannot convert as he airballs on that one. As Squerto goes over the top, shot from the corner. Twenty seconds left. Is it gonna send O'Brien to the line? Hey, cannot convert on the first one. O'Brien gets his own rebound and can oh. convert on that one. Air balls. And, and as Alex Streich seems a little frustrated with when, when the Strike. ball hit his foot. Strice didn't get a call he thought he got. With 14 seconds left. They're going to roll the ball out. Working around the horn. Look for a shot. Last three seconds. Two. One. And the final buzzer rings here. And that's it. That's going to complete the undefeated season for the Baymen as they storm the court. Oyster Bay is undefeated, and um, it's been a really great season for them. Again, they've been absolutely amazing. It's like, it's, I'm speechless.
Okay, Griffin. So, um, as team captain, <laughs> how do you think your team did so? Did team did this uh, season? I think our team did uh, very well. We played very well as a team. Okay. Um, how do you think uh, you individually did this season? Uh, I feel like I played well. I could have felt like I could have played better some games, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> how do you take today? How do you take today's win and being undefeated? Very good win. I'm very happy that we won. Ten and zero. Yeah, kept your rec kept your record. Yeah. Um, again, and Coach Soper. Um, how do you feel? How do you feel as him as a coach? He's a very good coach. I feel like he's a very good. Coach. He helped you out a lot. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So uh, thank you, Griffin, and um, nice win. Thank you. Okay, Coach Soper, um, how do you feel like your team did all season? I mean, we went undefeated, right? You can't get any better than yeah. that. The best part about it was that it wasn't like every game was a blowout. Like, we won really tough games. So, hey guys, even though, even much, though we tough. were undefeated, it meant, a lot to it meant uh, we earned it, right? These kids really earned it. We played as a team. We got mo every game, we got everyone in, right? So, it was a tremendous season, right? To go undefeated, I think as a player, I might have once, but never as a coach. So, I'll remember this group forever. Um, what do you think your team did the best this season? I just think we share the ball. I think we, we play team basketball, and I think we really rebound well, right? Okay. So even if we even if we miss shots or we're not hitting our shots, right, we're able to get second chance opportunities, and they really enjoy each other, right? When you play basketball, you gotta you gotta share the basketball. When you're friends with each other off the court and like each other, right, you, you play team basketball. Yep. Thank you very much, Coach Sober. Hey, thank you, Bayman TV. Thank you guys for coming, right? Girls for coming, right? It was awesome for the boys. Where's my book? That's going to do it inside James H. Vernon Gym. I was joined here tonight by Brian Donahue behind the camera. Mr. Donahue, our club advisor, great help. Faith Lingen behind the camera and Chiara Ritigliano behind the scenes. I was joined in the booth with James and uh, it's been a great night and a specialty broadcast brought to you by Bayman TV, one time thing for our undefeated seventh graders. You get another undefeated team, you'll get a specialty broadcast. That's gonna sign off now. Tune in for your girls basketball game.